on the fivefold ministry, the ascension gifts, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Amen. So we go back over the scripture. Says this is our last one, um, and I wonder. Uh, so you all get it. I mean, we ought to know this by now because we've had seminars and workshops, and now we're doing it uh, for uh, our Sunday lesson. So this should be something ingrained in your head. We've been doing it for a long time, and I did it because the Lord says it's time to reestablish or remind the people mm -hmm. of the ministry that they are involved in, that I planted them in. You have been planted here. You didn't just join. You didn't just decide to come. God divinely planted you here. Amen. Amen. In this ministry for your benefit. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 12 and 13. It's also in Corinthians, if you look. But Ephesians says, It was He, meaning Christ, who gave to be some apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for the work of service. The King James Version says, uh, for the maturing of the saints for the work of the ministry. Amen. 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 And then it says, why did he do that? So the body of Christ may be built up, encouraged, strengthened, until we all, how long should we do it? Until we all reach unity in the faith. Did everybody say? And in the knowledge of the Son of God, not only am I saved, I know who God is. I've been discipled. I've been training. I've been learning. Amen. So I can become mature. So I can attain the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So I can be just like him. That I can do the things that he do. He said that the things that I do, you can do and even greater. Oh, that's serious, y'all. So why are you shortchanging yourself like you can't do anything? Wow. Tell your neighbor, I can do anything. I can do anything. Amen. Yeah, you can do anything. Amen. The apostle governs. You all should have notes on that. The prophet, let me use my hand because this is the physical structure when we do our workshops to help you understand. The apostle, here the thumb. The apostle governs. Now why is he over down here instead of up here with the rest of you? Because when you govern, you have to be set apart so you can see what's going on. Amen. Why is the uh, 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 why is it sometimes the Lord doesn't move our mountains? Why is it sometimes he doesn't show us a way around our mountains, our problems in our life? Sometimes he wants us to climb them. Amen. And then he gives us the equipment to climb them. The power, the ability. Why? Because God wants to show you things in your life. Y'all watch this. That you can't see on ground level. When you change your altitude, you can see further than you can if you're down low. So sometimes God is not going to move your mountain. He's not going to show you around it. He's going to cause you to climb it because at the end, he wants you to see things that are for you. So the apostle has to be set apart so he can see what's going on so he can better govern. Amen. Amen. The next one is the prophet. The prophet guides that pointer finger. He shows the way. This is where you go. This is don't, this is where you don't go. This is who you see. This is who you don't see. This is when you do it. This is when you don't do it. It is the pointer finger. The prophet guides. The evangelist, apostle, 
prophet, evangelist. The evangelist is the longest finger of all because it extends beyond the four walls of the church into the community. Y'all talk to me. The evangelist is to go out into the world and bring people in. You can't evangelize each other. We already say you either evangelize the lost or you evangelize the backslide. Amen. Either you save and you're not faithful in church and you're just doing whatever or you've never received Christ in your life and I want to keep you from going to hell. Amen. So you need to come on. Because while we're praying for all this other stuff we want God to do, I keep telling you there's nothing greater than God can ever give you is salvation. Because salvation doesn't make you act right, people. It does not. Salvation is your faith in God and believing that I, if I believe in Christ and I realize that I'm a sinner, I'm messed up and I need his help and I need him to save me and I want him to be Lord in my life and I believe if he saved me, if I take, take him in my life, I will see heaven and live there for the eternity because this life is short. But eternity is forever. Are you with me? Amen. So the evangelist reaches beyond the other ministries out to get people because the greatest gift God will ever give me is his son who died on the cross. And if he gave up his life for me, don't you think he'll keep a whip over my head, keep food in my belly, keep clothes on my back, keep my bills paid? All I got to do is be a good steward with the few dollars God gave me and everything else will work out. So that's the evangelist. The pastor is the ring finger because he is the only one that is married to the church. Amen. He's married to the church. He's tied to the body of Christ. He's the shepherd. We talked about that. He teaches and he, 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 he uh, 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 so the, the apostle, God, the apostle governs, the prophet guides, the evangelist gathers, the pastor, amen? Anybody remember? But it's another G. Guards. He's the shepherd. The apostle, the pastor guards. He guards the people. He protects the people. He teaches them. He, he, he sees about them. He's there for them. He's, he's always there to lift them up, encourage them, teach them, train them. That's his job. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's why he's married to the church. The rest of them are not responsible for people like that. The pastor is. Right. Then you have the teacher. Yeah. Yeah. It's the smallest pink one on the hand. Yeah. But why is it the most important? But one of the most important, equally as important, is because if you make a fist, try making a fist and pulling your baby finger out. Y'all try it. Make a fist. Make a fist in your hand. And try to open your baby finger. What happens to your fist? It's not as strong as what it loses grip. You follow me? So as much as, as, as little as you think it is, it's unnecessary. You need that little finger. Amen. Amen. The teacher grounds. The job of the teacher, and oftentimes the teacher is overlooked because uh, it's all it functions so much. It functions so commonly in the church. People tend to pay attention to the people sitting in the pulpit or the people that's doing the praise and worship or the, the deacons that are handling the business and they forget about the teacher. Well, I'm one that understands. I am clear in the matter. Amen. That a preacher may only preach a few times a year because a pastor is going to preach most of the time. But a teacher gets to teach every week. Do you not understand? And, and some of my teachers, they go, Apostle, you know, uh, we just, the same thing you preached about, same thing you preached about, we, we had it in our class this morning. Well, I expect that. I'm going to tell you why. Now, let me talk to y'all for a minute. I'm going to tell you why. Because people build relationships with people. 
Am I right? Y'all talk to me. People build relationships with people. And when you build relationships, you talk to each other more. Y'all talk to each other more than you talk to me during the week. I know you do. I'm not mad about that. I'm just stating the fact. You talk to each other more than you talk to me. So you build a closer relationship with each other. They might, why don't you go ask pastor this, go ask pastor like you can't ask. Go ask pastor this, why don't you check pastor and see, like you can't come to me. But your relationship, you think the one that can talk to the pastor, like you can't. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. What happens is you build influence with people. You talk to these people every Sunday in your class. Am I right? Yeah. Now, if you're not, if I'm not careful, and I don't have the right teachers, the teachers will teach things that I don't approve of. Systems and ideologies and philosophies and ideas that are not of God. You follow me? My dad had a deacon that was teaching Sunday school and didn't believe in tithes. Once he found that out, he wasn't teaching no more. <laughs> that ain't what we teach. Yeah. Are y'all listening? Yeah. What am I trying to say? The wrong teacher can destroy the church. Amen. You know why? One, they got a closer relationship with you than I do. Amen. Number two, they talk to you as much as I do. Amen. Once a week, at least. Mm -hmm. Number three, they talk to you before I do. Oh, wow. They talk to you at nine o'clock, I'm talking to you at eleven. So I gotta make sure what they said at nine o'clock don't conflict with what I said at eleven o'clock. <laughs> are y'all listening? Yeah. Teachers are valuable. That's why I am more ready to license a teacher than I am a preacher. Come on. Does that make sense? Amen. Because they're part of the they're part of the, the fivefold ministry. They're valuable in the church. They're more valuable than a preacher, associate minister coming up and preaching, getting his 22 minutes of fame until the next time he preached. And I got a person talking to my people every single Sunday or talking to them during the week. I need to know that we're on the same page. Amen. Does that make sense? Yeah. The teacher grounds. Mm -hmm. Teachers teach and edify the church, imparting divine life and anointing to their listeners who become more hungry for the word of God. As the teacher illuminates scripture and brings forth truth never seen by their listeners before, giving you revelation and understanding, going through a scripture, helping you see what this means and what it says, being able to adequately answer your questions when you have questions so you can leave the class feeling better, more empowered, you with me? Yeah. Spiritually compensated. Uh -huh. While prophets reveal the heart of God, teachers reveal the mind of God. Are y'all listening? Yeah. Prophets and teachers balance each other in the church. So therefore, for the teacher and the prophet to be more effective, they both need to function in the church and not just teachers. You have mountains of churches that only have teachers and no prophets. Are you listening? When you have no prophets, you have no one to give you uh, 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 the heart of God after you just heard what's on God's mind. Are you listening? Yeah. Because sometimes you're talking to folk and they're telling you what they're saying, but you got to listen to their heart. Is their heart and their head lining up? Yes, yes. The head saying one thing, but the heart might mean something else. Yes. Are y'all listening? Yes. Well, you said this, yeah, but that ain't what I meant. <laughs> but you presented one way to me, but in your heart, you was another way. 
I heard what was came out is in your head. But you had an agenda. And you saw me and you thought you can use me or misuse me or abuse me or whatever. So now I have to have discernment. Somebody say discernment. To understand if, if your heart and your head, my, what's the difference between the heart and the head? Your information and your intention. I'll give you a good example between the heart and the head. Peter and Judas. One denied him, Christ. The other betrayed him. The biggest difference between the two is Judas he committed a premeditated act. He had already decided. He had already met with the other guys uh, uh, and, and, and got paid. To identify who Jesus was. Because he was so common with the rest of his disciples and the people. Those who really knew him didn't really know what he looked like. Are you listening? Yeah. That was premeditated. That was in his heart. He thought that he, it was in his heart. But Peter, what he did was in his head. Because he said, Peter, you're going to deny me. No, Lord, Lord, I would never deny you. I would never do that. One was intentional. One was by accident. And the situation came and he did exactly what Jesus said he, what he said he wouldn't do. But he didn't tend to do it. Fear got in it. That's a difference. It wasn't premeditated. You follow me? Yeah. What's in your heart is premeditated. Mm -hmm. What's in your head is information. Mm -hmm. All right. And some of us got in trouble listening to our heart and your head saying, don't do it. Amen. It ain't going to work. Amen. It ain't right. But your heart going, but do you love me? <laughs> And the Holy Ghost, and maybe you ain't never, you never heard the Holy Ghost, but that's the Holy Ghost telling you if you know it. No one ever told you, I'm telling you now. That's the Holy Ghost saying, don't do it. Something ain't right. Something just ain't right. You make me feel good. You know how it is, you, you get ready to leave out the house, and your keys is on the table, and that voice in your head say, Get your keys. And you go, okay. And you're busy doing other stuff. And that voice one more time says, get your keys. And, and you say, okay, I'm going to get them. And you go out the house. And you lock. And the door locks. You know, the automatic doors are locked by itself. And you get out there and get to the car. Man, got my keys in the house. That was the Holy Ghost telling you. You should have got. See, that's what you. I learned to move then. Don't put God on pause. Finish what you're doing and decide I'm going to go back and do what God said. No, because my mind may forget. When you tell me the first time, Amen. when you're walking down the street and you walk past the liquor store and the Holy Ghost says, Don't do it. <laughs> and if you don't think you can walk past that liquor store, keep going, I'd go across the street the other way. <laughs> Listen, sometimes you got to go out the way to defeat the devil. Just go out of your way. You're on your way to work. You're driving. You're and it's that, that voice saying, you turn right here, go this way, go down. But no, that's that's take me three minutes out the way. I can go straight through here. And it's tell you one more time, you act the light and you disobey and you keep going. You got down there, got stuck by a train. You're 20 minutes late for work. Had you followed the Lord, you'd have been on time. Yeah. Or you got down there and was going, driving 30 miles an hour in a 20, 20 mile hour zone when the red light camera's click, click. Yeah. Now you got a ticket. Because you didn't do what the Lord says. Yeah. You better do it when He says it. Yeah. Are y'all listening? While the prophets reveal the heart of God, teachers reveal the mind of God. Prophets and teachers 
balance each other in the church, which can also create tension. Okay? Prophets have a revelation of hidden things in the future, while teachers have hidden things in the Word. Amen? Amen. Teachers reveal the spe specifics of the revealed truth, while prophets reveal the spectrum. Wow. Are y'all listening? Let me stop right there. And you can't let the spectrum mess you up with specifics. Because some folk can hear a word from the Lord and give word, a pro word of prophecies to some people, and then oh, it's been two years. It ain't happened yet. Huh? Maybe it was wrong. I have yet, praise the Lord, Amen. to give a wrong word. Because I ain't giving it of myself. Amen. Are y'all listening? Amen. How, come it, how come it didn't come to pass? Well, did you pay attention to the specifics? Amen. Have you been in church? What does the word say? See, a prophetic word is never, y'all gonna go sleep on it. A prophetic word is never going to supersede the written word. Amen. Because the written word is prophetic already. God is already telling you what he is and is not going to do. And he's not going to change it because you're having a pity party or you down in the dumps or whatever your situation is. God says you've got to align yourself with me. And here's the specifics. Here's the plan. And now what the prophet does, the prophet just expands that horizon, that perspective. He, he, he protracts. He says, hey, all of this is going to happen as well. But you can't negate the specifics. Because if you don't do this, this ain't happening. Are you listening? Yeah. It's just certain things you got to do to be able to get a call. Does that make sense? You got to have a job. You got to keep your job. You got to establish credit. You got to save some money. Are y'all listening? When you get a job, establish credit, save some money, you can go get a car. Am I right? And the Lord... The Lord says, you're going to get a brand new car next year. He said, Lord, I thank you because my car is about to die on me. I can, and I've been, I've been seeing this car. And, you know, I, I just want this car. And the Lord said, I'm, I'm going to give it to you next year. Mm -hmm. So you do do nothing. No. Mm. Next year, year's gone. Prophet said, I was going to get a car. I ain't got no car yet. But did you keep your job? <laughs> did you keep your credit halfway up? You don't need a whole lot of credit to get a car. Did you keep your credit halfway up? Did you save for some money so you put some money down? I, mean, I get tired of people walking the showroom floor. I'm just believing God. I'm going to get this car. No money down. No this. And you got a 400 credit. Working part time at a Wendy's. Come on. Get Okay, I thought I'd get some help up in here. God don't work out of order. You want God to do all this great stuff for you, and you did nothing on your own. Why would God bless you, and you have not been a good steward? You have not been a good manager of the things he's given you. Would you give your child, your eight-year-old, the keys to your car? No, you wouldn't. Would you give your 15-year-old access to your bank account and they can't keep the $5 a week allowance that you give them? They got no bills. You can't hold two of them, take $1 and put it up, you can spend the phone. At the end of the week, I want to see that $1. And they got every excuse why they had to spend that $1. But they ask you for the, for the car to your credit, your bank. Ain't going to happen. Because you ain't showing me you can deal with the five dollars. Me and you both gonna be sitting outside. Yeah. Are y'all listening? Amen. So all I'm trying to say is 
You have to uh, 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 regard, you have to pay attention, you have to fulfill the specific things. If you want the, 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 the larger things to happen. Does that make sense? While prophets possess foresight, seeing forward, teachers have insight. So now I have understanding as I'm moving forward, as I'm anticipating, as I am expecting because I live in expectation every day for God to do something amazing for me. Every day I expect God to do something amazing for me. Yeah. If amazing is nothing but, but waking me up this morning and keeping me in my right mind, I'm healthy. That's amazing because some folk didn't make it. And watch this. You know, uh, 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 I was in the lottery, but they didn't pick my number. Every day, I'm like, I'm like the uh, 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 the bag with numbers in it, and 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 folk, and the world is digging in the thing, trying to get the numbers. I'm. I'm getting out to my arm. You don't get me today. Not today. Uh -uh, I'm going to move. Because you pick me, I don't know what you're going to do to me today. Mm -mm. When God say move, I move. That hand coming down there, that world's hand. Trying to get you. Take your life. Take your mind. Take your joy. Take your peace. You pay attention to the world, you won't have nothing. I'm going to move out the way. If that hand don't look like God's hand, uh-uh. I want nothing you got. Nothing. Nothing. Prophets are risk takers. Why is that? Why do you think that is that prophets are risk takers? Because uh, uh, prophets operate in the spirit realm. And they're operating on the level of their faith as they understand God. So it's a risk because they don't see, they're depending on the voice of God, they're depending on the eyesight of God, they're depending on the intellect of God, they're depending on the heart of God to lead them and guide them because they don't know. So when they open their mouth, they're taking a risk as calculated as it is. They're taking a risk that what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing, what I'm understanding, uh, 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 what I'm perceiving, is accurate and from God. I say that because in our classes, when you learn about prophecy, there's at least two voices going on. Yours and God's. Well, we're going to make it three. Yours, God's, and the devil's. So is this my mind? Because I, I, I got a mind. I can think. Is this my thoughts in my head? Is this the devil or is it God? So I have to know how to calculate and understand and divide and, and recalibrate so I know exactly who's talking. So I say, Tim, stop talking to yourself. Devil, be quiet because I'm trying to hear God. Because there's a word from the Lord. And like anything else, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Amen. Amen. Yeah, the more you do it, the better you get at it. You ain't going to get better at it just waiting for something to happen. You have to wake up every morning expecting to do it. Amen. Watch this. Just hear from God. If you ain't got nobody to talk to, you live by yourself. God, talk to me. Let me see things. I mean, I never talk to this person, but let me see. And I tend to pray for people in, in my prayer time or my meditation time. Their faces, their names come to me. I didn't think about these people. I hadn't talked to them, but I pray for them. But evidently, God wants me to give a word in the spirit realm. And I, and, and I, I believe, I'm a risk taker to believe that it's going to come forth even if I never know about it. Because it's not about me. I'm just a vehicle that God can use me. Yeah. Are y'all listening? Amen. So prophets are risk takers. Teachers move by understanding and planning. Isn't it wonderful when you can understand the word? I had so many people say, I, you know, I like, I don't mind reading the Bible. I just don't understand it. 
when you're trying to understand it out of your own intellect instead of understanding it out of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And, and that's easy because if you're saved, the Holy Ghost in you, you just got to figure out how to let the Holy Ghost use you. Well, how do I do that? It's easy. Say, God, open my mind up to allow the Holy Ghost to, when I read the word, give me understanding. There's nothing magical about it. You just got to want God. Yeah. Are y'all listening? Yeah. This is the impact of the teacher. Mm -hmm. Teachers are very essential in the body of Christ to give the sheep a good foundation of the word of God, something many charismatic churches seem to lack today. I wish I could talk about that. Y'all hear me? You'll always hear me say, I pastor a mature church. I speak that. I love to shout. I love to praise. I love to worship. But if you spend more time shouting and bumping and jumping in church and don't get a word that's going to settle you and cause you to have the, the anchors that you need in your life when the wind starts to blow on you and the devil starts to toss you, you need some anchor. Like you can be stable and steadfast and not wishy-washing all over the place. And what does that start in your mind? You can't convince me, devil, of anything because I'm anchored in the Lord. I may not like what's going on. It may not feel good. I may not want to be bothered with it today, but that's all right. I can't control when situations going to come, but I can't control how I deal with the situation. I can't control my attitude. And my attitude says I am more than a conqueror. I don't feel like dealing with you today, devil. But that's all right. Since you want to come, I don't feel like fighting. But understand, I ain't scared to fight. I tell the devil all the time. I said, listen, when you, you, he already know now because he know me. We done been in, we done been in many fights. I tell him, listen, when you see me uh, uh, running, I ain't retreating. I'm reloading. It's a different mentality. No, don't move. Don't move. No, you you brought the fight to me because I wasn't bothering you. I wasn't looking for you. I was minding my business and you stepped into my life and I really don't feel like dealing with your foolishness today. But since you want to bring a fight, stay, don't stay right there. <laughs> And the next thing about me that the devil understands, I don't fight fair. No, no, no. I, I, I don't know what side of town you grew up, but I grew up on the west side. I ain't seen a west sider yet that fights fair. They bringing everybody with them. It's a group problem. Of uh, me and all the angels, the anointing G, everybody from the kingdom is coming. But I'm just a little demon. You should have kept your little demon self or something. Go bother somebody else. Uh, 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 uh. I ain't coming to play. So you know when you come to me, you better come. You may bring the devil himself. And he know he ain't got no win either. Because I'm going to call Michael. You want me to call Michael. He keeps you. He doesn't. I got a shit. Oh, yeah. Typically talking, I got it. I can tell y'all, it's taking a risk here, taking a risk. He done kicks you, beat you up once. And you know, he watches me. Holy Ghost, go get Michael. Because, you know, the devil has showed up. I ain't scared of you. I got help. I don't never move by myself. I, I, I got excited. I'm almost done. I, I was at work the other day, and, and they, they, they talk, I already knew this. I, I knew this from just being my training in, in martial arts and stuff. But they would tell us at work, they said, when a person do this, uh, they say use equal or greater force. So you can use a greater force. You don't have to equal their force. You can do a greater force, but don't have to be deadly force. I said, I'm glad, I'm glad you reiterated that because that was on my mind anyway. <laughs> I, I 
that's just my mentality, Deacon. If you do something to me, I'm going to do something to you back worse than what you did to me to give you a sign. You don't want to do that no more because that ain't all I got. Amen? And some of us praying like, Lord, please, if you help me, I need you right now. Lord, come on in the room. Mm -mm, he already here. Amen. Yeah. Yes, yes. I ain't scared of the devil. All right. I admit, I don't want to be bothered with him, but I ain't right. scared of him. Right. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. And when he understands your MO, mm -hmm. I am never alone. Yeah. See, I may look like I'm alone, yeah. but the devil operates in the spirit realm. So I have to remind him, I know where you operate. You don't operate in the physical. You're trying to affect the physical, but you operate in the spirit realm, and I'm operating in the spirit realm. So I see you, and you see everybody with me. Do we really want to do this today? Or can I just go? Because it ain't going to go well for you. It didn't go well for you the last time. Have you won since I've been born? No, you're, so you are, are owing 500. Do you really want to do owe 501? Find somebody else you're going to win with. Come on That's the attitude you got to have. Yeah. And you'll change your mind about your life. Yeah. You'll see yourself different. Yeah. You start letting people tell you or situations tell you what you can't do and what you can't have. Right. See, this is the teacher. It's not prophetic. It's the teacher helping you understand. Yeah. When you know who you are, when you really know and own who you are in the Lord, Nothing, nothing yes. is too good for you. Amen. There's nothing you can't do. Amen. Because God don't love you based on your behavior. Amen. Right. Amen. Oh, see, that, that was enough to tear the whole building down. Amen. Man, if God loved me based on my behavior, I'd have been, I'd have been dumb when I was five. <laughs> He loved me because the blood of his son is on me. He loved me enough to, to, to accept me regardless of my behavior. Yes. Now, that don't mean I need to go act all wild and crazy. But it does mean I ought to work and ask the Holy Spirit to help me be better because he took me the way I was. Because we got all these conditional folk and people tell you, I love you unconditionally. They lying when they say it. I'm almost done with they lie. If somebody tell you I love you no matter what, they lie. Yeah. Yeah. You think they love you no matter what? If you pay all the bills in the house, you better well stop paying the bills. <laughs> See how much they love you. Wait, you love me no matter what? I didn't get you nothing for Valentine's Day, nothing for anniversary, nothing for Christmas, nothing for your birthday. I want to really see if you love me no matter what. And they go, they, and they saying, you ain't got too many no matter what. <laughs> if you love me no matter what, every time you wake up in the morning, I'm going to slap you dizzy just because I can. But you say you love me no matter what. See, that don't, I'm looking at y'all and that don't look like that works. If it does, let me know. I'll start today. I just go down the road. So if you know it don't work for you, why are you gonna listen like Lottie all day? I just love you. I don't care what it is. I'm here to the thick to the end of time. They lie when they say it. They just don't want to lose you. They don't know what else to say, so they tell a lie. They may not mean no harm, but don't nobody love you unconditionally but the Lord. Yeah. He's the only one. Yeah. I can mess up and say, God, I'm so sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. He said, I knew you was going to mess up before you messed up. I already, <laughs> I already knew. Yes. But I saved you for the mess up. Yeah. I saved, I, 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 I covered your sins, your past sins, your present sins. And your future sins, because there's nothing that you can do that surprises me. I already, I already knew this. I knew before I created the world that when I created you, you was gonna have this problem, and I'm gonna get. But I got an answer. I got an antidote. I'm gonna get you out. Uh -huh. Amen. 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 
And sometimes God let us wade in our problems longer than we would like to help us remember that it was him that got us out and not us. And when you realize you can't help, you can't manage your tomorrow, some of us can't even manage our now. You sure can't manage what you don't know. Lord, if you help me out of this. Folks say that don't even go to church. Lord, if you help me out of this. I promise you I won't go back. You don't have the power to promise God anything. No, we don't have that kind of power. We need the Holy Ghost. Lord, help me out of this and then help me not go back. Then I got to be obedient. This is the teaching. This is what you ought to get in teaching when you're in Sunday school, in Bible class. The word, of, this is not prophetic, it's the word of God. But the prophetic word of God, the written word will tell you, if you do this, this will happen. It'll come to pass. But you got to pay attention to the details. Tell your neighbor, you got to pay attention to the details. You should be a saying, the devil is in the details. Well, let me change that. The Holy Ghost is in the details. It really is. I hope I'm helping somebody. I'm almost done. Teachers are the very are very essential in the body of Christ. They give the sheep a good foundation of the word of God. Something many charismatic churches seem to lack today. We can't have a lot of jumping and shouting and bumping and no and ten minute word and we go back to jumping and shump, jumping and bop bop uh you know whole lot of stuff going on. Uh -huh. In the room shouting. Yeah. But you ain't got nothing to hold you. The greatest church you can be in is a teaching church. Right. Now understand, you got to learn how to stay awake. Yeah. You got to learn how to focus. Because yeah. you need what's being given to you. Yeah. Are you listening? There are so many excellent teachers in non charismatic churches, yet, too many charismatic churches focus so much on the spirit that they neglect the scriptures. Amen. Y'all got, got that. You don't, you don't believe me? You just look on Facebook, you see them all the time. Everybody bumping and jumping. And they did it all day. Most of the service and give a watered down word and wonder why divorces is happening and families are falling apart and people going to jail and got all kind of addictions and lying and cheating and homosexuality. All this foolishness because there's no word to convict you. Amen. Our job is not to judge anybody. It's to give you the word and the Holy Ghost deals with you. Yeah. I can't change nobody. Listen, I can't even change me. Yeah. I have a hard time convincing me to do what's right sometimes. Yeah, yeah me. Yeah. Me and God, get, 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 get just one time, Jesus, one time. Just, 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 just small, you know. Yeah. Maybe y'all don't negotiate with God. It was, you know, just a small one. Just, mm -mm. It, it'll get you in trouble. That's how the devil gets you. A little bait at a time, a little bait at a time. Yeah. Before you know it, you're caught up. In conclusion, the Lord has called some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. Today, he is restoring a biblical understanding of what these roles and callings mean. So that his bride, us, can come into the fullness of what he has for us. Getting ready for the bride's glory, the bridegroom's glorious return, because Jesus is showing up, coming back. Amen. The church has come a long way over the past few decades, even though there is still a lot of wrong conceptions and rejection due to abuse and 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 things happening in the body of Christ. However, apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Amen. The Bible says, Thou shalt not kill. <laughs> Amen. I thought I'd throw it out there. Amen. 
Yes, see, he had to go. I, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. Sometimes, watch this. And, and, and listen, sometimes, but, but Mark, this is important though. Sometimes, see, God allows things to happen for a reason. Sometimes, when you're doing things and you're committed to doing what God wants you to do, y'all listen to me and I'm done. The enemy, y'all hear me, the devil will come unexpectedly in your life to cause you to be distracted. Watch this. He can't kill you. He can't stop you. But if he can distract you, see, he can't take your anointing. He can't take your power. He take, can't take you away from the Lord. But since I can't destroy you, if I can distract you, you won't do what he wants you to do because I got you busy doing something else. I got your mind confused. So when you find yourself distracted in the midst of doing your work, kill it. I just said that I don't play with the devil. You come, I'm busy and you bother me and I'm trying to live better. I'm trying to get my mind right. I'm trying to be more stronger. I'm trying to build stronger relationships. I'm, I'm trying to let the Holy Ghost recover me from the foolishness I've been dealing with. And you coming in my life and all oh, over the now, what was you saying, God? Because what you said is more important. See, you can learn out of anything if you have a spiritual mind. Well, I'm going to hit the devil with it. No, well, we got fly swatters for flies. We got the Bible for the devil. Grab your Bible, say, in the, in the name of Jesus. I'm going to open the window. You got one time. Amen. Amen. The apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. This is the kind of church this is. You have all functioning in the church. And, and maybe you see yourself after now fitting in in one of those areas. Amen. If you finish your spiritual gifts and you want to understand what your gift is, your gift is given to you by the Holy Spirit so that you may function in the world as a kingdom citizen and you don't look ordinary. I was at work and the young lady was, she was talking to a group of us and a co-worker and she said, you know, I want to say this. She said, no, I can say this to you. I didn't know how. I think I've seen her twice in the last two months. Wow. She said, and it's like eight of us standing around, we all talking. She said, she go, I, I, need say, I need to say something, but you know what? I can say this to you. And she grabbed me by my hands and pulled me all the way back about 25 feet. Yeah. What is she talking about? What she got to say to me that she couldn't say to them? She go, well, I just want you to know that, you know, the president, the guy that runs all of Illinois. I said, yeah, Travell Stewart. <laughs> oh, I said, oh, she goes, that's my brother. Oh, wow. I said, I won't tell nobody. I said, nobody knows? Nobody knows. Good for you. You know, but I realized what it was. She didn't know. A couple people know I'm a pastor. The rest of them, I don't go saying, hey, I'm an apostle. You know? I don't give a title when you ask me my name. I keep my name. But I realized that she saw something in me that she didn't see in everybody else. And she felt comfortable to share this information. And I said, God, I thank you for letting me, because I always want to represent the kingdom, and I don't have to give titles. I want to stick out like a sore thumb. I want to say something different about that guy. For whatever reason, I felt comfortable saying that to you and not to somebody else. You follow what I'm saying? Amen. That's the, you, that's the place you want to be in where people see you differently. And then you don't abuse that. You use it for the glory of God. 
Amen? Amen. 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 Put your hands together and give God some praise. I pray that the teaching has been a blessing to you. I hope that it's helped you. Hope to help you understand more about this ministry and what we do and how we function. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you're here and you don't have a church home, and you're looking for a church home, you're looking for a pastor, we want to encourage you to come at this time. Amen? If you're here, is there anyone here 